The Twisted Lady by Cynic Happy I was tucking my little sister into bed when she spoke up. Can you sit with me until I fall asleep? Why? I asked. I thought you weren't afraid of the dark. It's not the dark, Charlotte said. It's the Twisted Lady. A chill shot down my spine. Who? The Twisted Lady, my sister repeated. She comes into my room and watches me as I sleep. Wordlessly, I lay down beside Charlotte and held her close. She fell asleep within minutes, but I stared up at the dark ceiling and tried to make sense of what I'd just heard. The Twisted Lady. I knew that name. When I was three years old, I used to talk about a gnarled-looking woman who lived in the basement and only came out at night. I described her as having white eyes and a face like a skeleton. My parents assumed it was just a recurring nightmare and got a nightlight for my room. That seemed to help, and I grew up believing the Twisted Lady had been nothing more than a construct of my imagination. But now, fifteen years later, my seven-year-old sister had seen her too. I stayed with Charlotte all night, my sleep restless and uneasy. The next morning, I asked my mother if she'd told my sister about the Twisted Lady. No, of course not. I wouldn't want to scare her. Well, she was talking about her last night. She must have overheard us discussing it. Mom's lips thinned with worry. Oh dear, I hope she doesn't start having nightmares like you did. That day I could barely concentrate in school. I kept sifting through my memories, trying to find an image of the twisted lady. I was unsuccessful. When I got home, I searched the internet for clues, but nothing solid came up. All too soon, the night rolled around again, and I stood outside Charlotte's door, listening to her speak to Mom. The twisted lady will come. Honey, there's no twisted lady. Trust me, you're completely safe. She's real, Mama, Charlotte insisted. The desperation in her voice brought stinging tears to my eyes. She really is. Honey, go to sleep. It's going to be okay, I promise. She kissed my sister and walked out of the room. When she saw me waiting in the hall, she gave me a reassuring smile and said, Everything's okay. But it wasn't. Charlotte woke up that night, screaming. She was in here! She wailed when I burst into her room, my parents shadowing me. The twisted lady was in here! I picked her up and rocked her. Mm, it's okay, it's okay. You're safe now. She sobbed as our parents came over and wrapped their arms around us both. We sat there hugging until Charlotte dozed off again. After tucking her back in, we all went back to bed, but I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. That was just the beginning. A pattern emerged over the next two months. At least one night a week, Charlotte would scream out at night and insist that the twisted lady had been in her room. We would calm her and she would go back to sleep, only for it to happen again a night or two later. Soon the physical effects of the nightmares became apparent. Plum-colored circles formed around Charlotte's pretty cornflower blue eyes. Her face was perpetually as pale as unbaked bread dough and she moved as if her legs were too heavy for the rest of her body. She could barely stay awake, her grades were beginning to suffer, and we were all worried that she'd only get worse. I still wasn't sure if I believed whether or not the twisted lady was real. I'm not exactly a skeptic, 
but I'd rather rule out all rational explanations before believing there are paranormal forces at work. Also, I was afraid. I couldn't remember the twisted lady herself, but I did remember the terror she had planted in me, a terror that seemed never to have left me after all. One night on a weekend my parents were out of town and I came up with a plan. What if I could get physical proof that the twisted lady wasn't real? If Charlotte saw it for herself, maybe the nightmares would stop. If she knew the twisted lady wasn't real, she wouldn't have to be afraid. So I set up my father's camcorder in Charlotte's room, explaining to her that if the twisted lady came by, the device would pick up on her. I then took my baby sister into my room, and we crawled into my bed and fell asleep. I woke up extremely early, just as the sun was beginning to bleed through the hazy lavender sky. Rubbing my eyes, I stumbled into the hall, and my heart flew into my throat when I saw that Charlotte's door was open. I was pretty sure I'd closed it the night before. Moving as quietly as I could in my slightly panicked state, I grabbed the camcorder and went downstairs to the living room, where I uploaded the video onto my laptop and sat down on the couch to watch. The first few hours of footage showed nothing, which only added to my mounting dread. At around midnight, something could be heard shuffling awkwardly up the stairs. By the time it reached the hall, I was shaking and had nearly bitten through the bottom of my lip. Very, very, very slowly, Charlotte's door squealed open, and the most horrifying thing I have ever seen entered my sister's room. It was a woman, a naked woman, a naked woman who looked like nearly every bone in her body had been broken and then reset by the most incompetent of doctors. She crab-walked on limbs bent sharply at bizarre angles, and her chest caved in as if she were missing whole sections of ribs. Her spine and shoulders curved inward, forming a camel-like bump on her back and pushing her head down between her breasts. And the sound she was making… Oh God! It was a deep, raspy, guttural noise, caught somewhere between a moan and a gasp and it made me want to claw my own ears off. She shuffled right up to Charlotte's bed and just sat there for a while, as if not sure what to do next. Then slowly she began to turn her head, neck cracking loudly with the movement. Her long stringy hair fell back as she looked right at the camera. Her face, to put it mildly, was grotesque. The skin was so taut I could see every contour of her skull and facial bones, and her eyes were rolled all the way back in her head. She had no visible lips, and her nose seemed to be caving in. I slammed my laptop shut and ran back upstairs. After searching Charlotte's room and finding no sign of the monstrosity I'd just seen, I grabbed my still-sleeping sister and fled to my best friend's house. I was in shock and I couldn't quite process what had just happened. <sighs> that was three years ago. Charlotte hasn't seen the twisted lady in a long time, and I never showed my parents the footage. In fact, I deleted it. I didn't want what I'd seen to be real. But now, I'm not sure I made the right choice. You see, a month ago, my father was doing some work in the basement when he discovered that some of the bricks in the wall had come loose. Further investigation revealed a makeshift grave where a broken human skeleton lay. The police haven't been able to identify the victim, but I know she's connected to the twisted lady. Since the discovery, past owners of the house have come forward and admitted to seeing her too. None of them imagined she was a possible murder victim. Then again, neither did my family. Looking back, I believe the twisted lady only wanted help. She wanted to tell someone who she was and what had happened to her, but she was unable to convey any of this. 
If I hadn't been such a coward and gotten rid of the footage, maybe her bones could have been discovered sooner. I hope they catch her killer so this sick bastard can be brought to justice. And I hope once he's brought to justice, the twisted lady can finally be at peace.